Hello everyone, um, thank you for watching this Q&A um, with Carol Salter and Fleur and Laura as well, the team behind um, the documentary film Left Coast. Left Coast is a, is a very intimate documentary that takes place at two food banks on the left coast of the UK. Um, let's kick off by just asking Carol if she can tell us a little bit about the film. Um, yeah, hello. The film I wanted to be about kindness. Um, when um, last year, which seems a very long time ago, um, it felt we were in quite a harsh landscape. Um, you know, I was very aware that there was huge areas of poverty and I wanted to sort of show uh, sort of an aspect of a life where we kind of need out food banks, but really get in there, get into the heart of it, you know, sort of feel like I wanted to scold somebody and feel that they were there in the food bank and they sort of was there for like a day and just witnessed sort of it so it was those small details that was mm. important yeah um so laura can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your involvement in the project and you know how you met carol and so on yeah, absolutely so um i am laura jameson i'm creative engagement manager for Left Coast, the arts organisation, not the film. Um, and at Left Coast, we are a Creative People and Places project. So we're an arts council funded project based in Blackpool and Wire. And um, so sort of our involvement in the film was that we have um, a programme of socially engaged work um, around live work residences in Blackpool and in Fleetwood. And so we have um, uh, partnerships with housing associations who uh, work in partnership with us to put artists into neighbourhoods uh, to test kind of the premise of what happens when artists become one of the neighbours when they live there full time as opposed to visiting and delivering projects and coming in and out of the area. So we have, um, we have artists that live for a year, for a year up to uh, 18 months with us um, and as part of that programme we have micro residences and the micro residences are there to test some of the, the things that come out of the main residences. Um, they're there to test um, the things that we wouldn't know. We wouldn't know unless you live in a place. And, um, and Carol applied for one of our micro residences. And the reason we were very interested in her work was because um, obviously we we're very interested in, in the, the, her, her filmmaking, um, but also her interest in this, this idea of kindness and um, the main resident artist, Ocean Farini, uh, had done a lot of work in the food banks in Fleetwood. Um, so there just seemed to be this great connection between what Ocean was doing and what, what Carol wanted to do. Um, so some of those connections had already been made. And, and also we're, we're really interested in showing, um, changing perception of place from outside and from inside. And the idea of kindness and living with great skill and this, this, this kind of contradiction that Carol captures beautifully in the film of what's going on politically and what's actually the lived experience of those, um, those policies, those central government policies and, and, and how people live with that and what it actually means for the person on the street. So yeah, so that's how we got to know Carol. And Carol came, came on a three week micro residency and stayed for about a year and a half <laughs> on and off. <laughs> so that's how, that's how the, the project developed. Um, Fleur, tell us a bit about your role in the project because obviously Carol is a very, um, I'm talking about you in front of you Carol which is embarrassing <laughs> but you're just going to have to cope with it. Um, Carol is a, is a unique filmmaker and yeah. builds incredibly close relationships with her subjects and has a very sensitive way of working. What's it like coming in as a producer facilitating that? Yeah, I mean, Carol is so independent and so talented. She doesn't really need a producer. She can do it all. And she often does. When she's up in Fleetwood or Blackpool, she's on her own. Because um, obviously it's so small budget. She's on her own and she's shooting, she's producing, she's developing relationships. She's trying to like take in how everyone's feeling because she's very sensitive as well and doesn't want to overstep boundaries. So I think the role of a producer when you work with Carol is essentially, it's it's a support role. <laughs> so come back to London, talk about what, what you've got, what you want next, and just sort of like be there on the journey with her. Because yeah, Carol, 
she spent a year or more sort of going back and forth it was it was going to have to be on her terms that the project felt right and it was moving at the right pace and the relationships were developed in the way that felt right for her. We worked before on Almost Heaven and Fleur came in at the end part because I um because I needed sort of support so we were building up a, we'd already built up a relationship um, then so yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's, we've been working together for maybe three years now. So yeah, we understand each other and we have a good, a good way of working, I think. And mm -hmm. just my main goal is just to support Carol because she does, she takes on a lot, but she always seems to get it done. So it's pretty, pretty cool to watch. <laughs> Carol, can you tell us a little bit about how you built those relationships? With the people and also specifically with Dave who is such a compelling protagonist mm. for your story. Um, how how did that come about? Did you go into the food bank mm. with an agenda? Um, how did, yeah, it, how so, did it come to be? Um, well actually I when I applied for the Left Coast Fund uh, with uh, Laura um, I, I didn't know that it was necessarily going to be a film about food banks or food poverty. I knew I wanted to sort of show um, community, you know, working despite all odds, you know. Um, mm. And so I, I had a, quite an open um, agenda, but I was very lucky to immediately, because of Ocean, who was the other artist in residency, to say she was volunteering in a soup kitchen. So I'd literally sort of arrived off the train and I worked um, in the soup kitchen, um, which is part of the food bank. And um, I kind of realized I had to just muck in. And so I said, oh, I'll wash up. <laughs> and Dave was the person who I was working with. So within about an hour, I was, I'd met Dave and really liked him. And he said he worked at this food bank. So I said, oh, can I come in? And it was all very tentative. So it took actually quite a few weeks of just going there and, and talking and observing. And, and I said, oh, can I take a photograph, literally, and then take a little bit from using my camera. And, and it was, for me, it's really important to feel I have permission and license before I just get the camera out and understand the kind of mechanics of the place and the, and the, and the kind of, it's a delicate place because a delicate situation. And um, also when I start to make a film, I'm never quite sure how I'm going to make the film. Um, it's mostly comes from a feeling, but actually how, how I'm going to point the camera, where am I going to point the camera? And um, I didn't know, I knew I liked Dave as, as you know, as a, as, as a person, I really liked him, but, but um, he sort of, it just grew slowly that I felt he was, you know, he was, he was the person to really mainly put the cam focus the camera on. Um, and I also became aware that I didn't really want to sort of show people, follow the people collect, you know, collecting the food because I felt that also felt more private that. So it, it was a slow process of kind of homing it in. Um, but I did then visit this other food bank and I saw the kind of more the epic size of what they did. And I felt that was important to show that. I had a big whiteboard with all the things that interested me and I was trying to see how I linked them up. The sea and the, and the kind of landscape that, you know, because of being on, on the coast, I felt the landscape was important. And looking for metaphors as well, because as soon as you go somewhere like Blackpool or Fleetwood, just visually it's quite striking. Yeah, it's, it's, for me that was one of the most moving moments, seeing those children and obviously you shot them in such a discreet way because it's sensitive to film children and we don't really see a lot of their faces, it's just their little hands on their breakfast. Mm. Um, but it is just so sad, the idea of so many children coming together and eating breakfast at school because they can't, you know, mm. it's, it's not, there's not enough money at home for them to have it at home and then what they are eating at school, you know, you can't look at that and think that's a nutritious breakfast, you know, it's beige and it's come out of a packet. Um, and mm. I think there's something so gentle about moments like that in the film where you just you just show that and you don't really make any comment and it's very quiet and the audience kind of brings 
their own feelings to it. But there's other moments where you're more, you're more uh, strong in the film with your point of view, contrasting, you know, these audio clips of politicians with what's going on. And as a, you know, as my experience as an exec of the film, it felt like the decision to have the politicians was a relatively late creative decision. Um, and I wondered if you could talk about how you came to that and how you selected what they were going to say. What you, or not what they were going to say, but what they'd said and how yeah. you were going to use it. Uh, the Politicians actually wasn't that late. It was actually something quite near the beginning uh, because at that time uh, I became a bit of a news junkie anyway because we were, there was all that Brexit stuff going on mm. and sort of hearing about everything. You know, like was, sort of every day something changed. And... Um, uh, so I was listening to um, about how I get to sleep. <laughs> Not now, thank goodness. <laughs> it's hearing um, uh, questions time. Um, and so I, I sort of had that rhythm going on in my head. And um, when I was on the tram, because this is great, you know, the tram goes from Blackpool to Fleetwood, I would sort of have that rhythm of, of, of chatter or kind of and going on. So that was, I always felt that that would be a nice counterpoint because I was sort of aware that I felt I wanted to show these, these, these different worlds, you know, and rather than, and, and the audio was a way of doing that. But obviously there's always a delicate balance. And um, I think, um, for her, I might say it's indecision, as <laughs> she just pointed out. But for me, it's like everything's very kind of finely tuned of what, what um, um, you know, you have one thing and it kills something else. And, and so you have to balance, you know, stuff. Um, um, so knowing where you put it and what you put is, is always at the end, you know, and, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and only in the mix you can work out whether you've killed something or you've created something powerful. And um, I mean, ridiculously, the, the, the last, I mean, there's a bit at the end where there is a bit of sort of, you know, voice and, and just to get that balance of how much you have against something else took ages in the mix and that was the bit that probably mm. made me late for the delivery. <laughs> I, I was going to say as well, so kind of the, from a, a creative point of view, deciding to put it in the film might have come later on, but it was really important. I think all the conversations I had with Carol throughout the whole thing, the political element and contrasting those things and it was one of the things that really drew us to the concept was the fact that it's not just a story about Fleetwood and Blackpool it's a story it's a national story it's a national crisis and we didn't want um, to produce something where people could just go oh that's just Blackpool oh that's just Fleetwood they're the towns on the edge you know and so I think it really kind of puts it in a, in a context when you start to hear some of that political mm. political commentary alongside it um, so it was definitely something that was was there quite early on from our conversations with Carol. Yeah, it really closes the the distance, doesn't it? Or it doesn't close the distance, actually, it shows you the distance, but it connects the two so well. Um, but it also, I think, made it an exceptionally difficult film to finish because the story was never finished, you know, and that politicians were constantly saying something else where you were just like, are you kidding? You know, let's, you know, that could be laid over left coast and make the point again and again the next week and again the next week. Yeah, we had a really lovely um, like um, archive researcher called Lydia Howe and she every day just added new links to, to uh, I don't know, Radio 4 or like BBC News. It was just every single day there was something else that Carol could have played with. So, um, yeah, when, I, <laughs> when, when she just when it's not indecision, it's just that there are so many things you can say about this issue and and it develops, it's even just developed even more throughout lockdown that there is so much you can say. It's almost, mm -hmm. it's, it was really tricky to choose what, mm -hmm. what to go with. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, I really loved that. I liked what you said, Georgia, about the, um, the way that Carol films, she allows people to kind of make their own decisions about things it's not forceful so i was really in intrigued when carol came up with this idea of the soundscape because it's not something i'd known her to do um before but maybe maybe carol you have and i and i 
and I didn't realize it but I just thought it was a really a really interesting and and brave sort of choice creatively mm. you mentioned there Fleur thinking about um you know the issue as it's progressed through lockdown and, and through the pandemic what is it like for the three of you thinking about the film now and now we know the situation is so much worse for so many obvious reasons um you know does it make you i don't know do you almost want to do a second a sequel an angrier more more stri more strident sequel i think it just it just it just shows i mean it it's just it's just more relevant now it is it is more relevant and it's um it's it makes us want to make policy change more. You know, it makes us mm. want to, you know, and, and a lot of the partners on the film, so our partners, our housing association partners, really, you know, they, they love the film because it just, it, it's just, it's kind of a it's, a, it's quite poetic how it, how it contrasts um, these kind of, you know, Dave and the gentle kindness and, and the, the humanity behind it and at the actual landscape of, of what that's, that's working in. So, Yes, I do. I do want to do you want to make it yeah, another one. But I do think that it's just even more relevant. Mm. Yeah, it's, um, it's actually kind of painful thinking about it, isn't it? How 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 much uh, worse it's gotten in the time that I think we probably all hoped there was an opportunity for it to improve. Um, yeah. And um, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Just how overstretched and um, how much energy it takes for the volunteers already in Left Coast just to imagine that they're having to triple or quadruple that is just really heart yeah, heartbreaking. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, can you tell us a bit, Laura, about how the film is functioning now for you, um, what you're using it for, who's seen it, what the reactions have been? I mean, that, that has changed my original plan just because of because <laughs> yeah. of the situation and you know we had lots of plans to try and bring some people from the food bank over to Manchester to see the premiere and and I think one of the things that we are um you know we always want to use obviously we're an arts organization is to elevate the conversation mm. and to have your personal story shown at home or you know shown nationally is it, it, you know that gives you a lot of power there's a, there's a power exchange there and it gives a um, a different landscape to tell your story so um so those things haven't happened and, and also we were going to do a local showing of it for um for the volunteers and, and that obviously hasn't happened either um but we are using it so as i say our housing association partners are using it to tell that story and i think mm -hmm. that's actually really a really successful outcome for us because it gives people the tools or the other a language to speak about something that they wouldn't mm -hmm. normally have um, so that's kind of our aim with it um, going forward is to um, yeah to prog progress those conversations and just put that lived experience that's the lived experience of so many people across and you can see it so beautifully in the film you can hear about it someone can tell you about it but it's not the same as seeing it mm. yeah absolutely and what are your hopes for the film Carol obviously it's out there in the in the big world world now um yeah no, it's, it's been kind of difficult because I suppose um, we hoped that it would kind of be showing more but um, it's it's going to festivals and, and um, I also from the same footage um, made another film um, that I felt could work on other platforms and um, it's still it focuses mainly what well, focuses on Dave um, who is in left coast and the film's called Breadline and so that one is also going to festivals um, it's, and um, hopefully both films can be used in different ways. Um, mm. so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're still haven't given up on the idea of community screenings. It's, you know, it's just a wait and see at the moment, like when we're allowed to kind of gather in, in person again and when people feel confident to do that. Um, but it's so important. That was the whole objective of the, of the project, but you know, for this film, for all of the other films that, spark conversations and we can just sit down and, and talk about them like we're doing now but in person and and offline I think you have so much more meaningful conversations as a result of just being being together and seeing worlds that you didn't know about really um we've got probably just a couple of minutes left um so the question I always ask people at the end and I've sprung it on you I normally warn people so I've sprung it on you so let's see how how this goes 
Um, I like uh, to ask the teams um, something that they've taken away personally, because obviously we talk a lot about what audiences get from films and we intend them for audiences. But I also think that as this year has taught us, anything can happen with the journey to the audience. And so thinking about what we take from the films that we make, I also think is quite a nice thing to think about what we've, what we've gained. Um, so I wondered if anyone has, a, has something that they took from it that they might like to share. Um. Laura, you go first. <laughs> Thanks, Carol. Thanks. Yeah, all handing on the picking. Um, I think probably the thing that I, I've taken from it, and it, it's just the it's just the the backing up of what you already know, and the thing um, is is that change of perception and how very skillful living in deprived circumstances are, and I think that's that is that is that emphasis that people have this. Uh, this idea that if you have little means, then you live an unskilled and unpurposeful life. And, um, and what the film shows is actually you have to be more skilled. You know, it's, it's harder to live with little means. And so that kind of, it just, I knew that, I know that we, we do a lot of work around uh, these, you know, these subjects, but I think it just, again, it, 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 it kind of cemented that for me. So, um, and yeah, and, and just that humanity and kindness and people putting mm. themselves out there for no money. These people are volunteers, you know, so that's kind of what I took a bit away from. And how important it is to keep that conversation going. Mm. You nailed that answer, Laura. Oh, yeah, thanks. I'd like to second that. <laughs> that's the yeah. cheap answer, Fleur. <laughs> I, I knew Laura would come up with a good answer. No, I, I suppose, yes, against all, all odds, there does always seem to be kindness that comes out of things. And um, yeah, I suppose, yeah. Um, I mean, I, for me, I suppose just how unpredictable everything is as well. Just, you know, like you, 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 you plan things and then suddenly things change all the time. So I think um, things I pushed to try and do last year didn't really matter because things have changed anyway. So maybe I'll be a bit more zen about my you know things yeah mm, yes zen that's very zen. nice note to yes. end on. well yeah. um thank you all um very much uh, for coming and talking to me about it it's lovely to be able to have this conversation after a little delay um and I hope everybody watching has enjoyed it thanks so much thank, thank you, you. Thank you.